so far. After having to wait a long time to heal up my Pokemon, Smoky Potty's here. We're here doing the big steady trying to find them. Wow, what a bunch of sad bullshit, huh? It's that time of year again. It's time to grab a blanket, lay down, and watch over the garden wall until it's springtime. Who needs sunshine and walking around? I'd rather sit in my house, drink three coffees, and still be tired enough to fall asleep at 6 p.m. Also, I'm in the basement of a venue right now in Cincinnati. That's because I'm on tour. And if you want to come see us on tour, head on down to curtisconnor.com and go get yourself some tickets, okay? Hey! How are ya? And welcome back to another YouTube video. My name's Jacob Andrew Sharp, and we... J shut! Everyone shut up. Everyone shut up. Shut your mouth, because we've got a doozy of a video. I'm sick of everyone saying, is it really a doozy? Shut up. <laughs> And guys, there's nuggets in here. Beautiful, majestic, angelic, holy nuggets. God nuggets. Nuggets that you put on the cross. Nuggets made from the body of Christ and dipped in the blood of the Savior. These nuggets will make you fear death and shame your children. And that's because while I was on cozy TikTok to cure my seasonal depression, I stumbled upon Jesus talk. Jesus talk. You know, the Bible, but on TikTok? <laughs> My For You page is actually the New Testament, TikTok, where my faith is always trending. Yeah, guys, Jesus didn't do anything wrong. Guys, I'm totally sick of these Gen Z non-believers trying to cancel Jesus. Like, what a defensive guy thing to say. I didn't do anything wrong. Are you being so emotional and crazy right now? I didn't mean to make you upset. And I didn't do anything wrong. Guy rips Bible. That's Marilyn Manson. Are you guys really in shock that Marilyn Manson ripped the Bible? I really want there to be like an odd couple TV show where it's like, Marilyn Manson and Jesus. One of them is the son of God and the savior of the Christian faith, and the other's a satanic rock star. These two just can't seem to get anything right. Produced by Chuck Lore, coming to you this Sunday. The devil on my shoulder. Now, I'm not here to disprove anyone's religion or make anyone feel bad about spirituality, because I can get down with that. I can get down with that kind of stuff. You know, I respect your religion as long as you're not using it to harm anybody. Whatever helps you get through the day and get through your life, fucking go for it. Most people don't know this, but I was actually a Jehovah's Witness for two and a half years of my life, until my parents left, so they could avoid all the emotional abuse they were experiencing. Because it's a cult. I'm just kidding, guys. It's not a cult. It's a cult. But yes, in all seriousness, I'm down for faith. I'm down for spirituality. But in my opinion, I can't see Jesus and God standing at the pearly gates being like, Okay, okay my, my child, child. Your, final your final test. test. Show, Show me your me for you page. page. Bruh. Guys, we all know the best Bible verses are on Musical.ly. Thou who revines shall be blessed with another revine. King Batch 6-6. Six, six. I'm also like so obsessed with like the Jesus conspiracy theories on TikTok. Like, I'm really sorry, guys, but you're not going to prove your point by using the same sounds as like the Mandela effect. You hear that? Did you feel that? So... Been hearing some strange noises outside now for a bit. I open the window, to show you. It's really strange. Listen. Who or what just made that sound? Did you hear a loud boom earlier today? Several people heard and felt a loud noise around 12.30 Central Time this afternoon. All over Carter County took to social media about a loud boom that shook their homes and workplaces around 10.15 this morning. So I ran to the back door and looked out, but I didn't see anything. We've heard Jesus is coming. Um, 
<laughs> there are lots of things. One popular explanation for all of these strange sounds being heard around the world is some people believe they are angels. They are the seven angels sounding the seven trumpets, which is talked about in Revelation. Because every conspiracy theory is always a two-parter. The earth and destroy it and change it more than anything else you have ever seen. When the fifth angel sounds his trumpet, the Bible says, John says, I saw a star fallen from heaven. This is the same star that Jesus said, I saw Lucifer fall like lightning from heaven. Lucifer, the morning star. And then Jesus will meet Lucifer, it says, and Christ, the one who holds the key to death and Hades, will hand over that key to Lucifer and he will give him permission to open up the bottomless pit. The darkest, worst part of hell will be open. This is the same place when Jesus, when he met that demon-possessed man and he cast the demons out of that man, those demons begged Jesus and said, please do not send us down into the abyss. So instead, Christ thrust them into a herd of pigs. This is the same abyss, this is the same dark place that in Genesis 3 we read about these fallen angels who left their boundaries and did wicked things with human beings and they were cast down into this bottomless pit, bound into chains of gloomy darkness. And Lucifer is going to open this bottomless pit and out will come a demonic army of locusts. These locusts will cause agony on all the men and women of the earth. So much so that all these men and women who rejected the Lord Jesus Christ will cry out and say, let us die. We long for death, but death will flee them. And for five months, these men and women will be tortured by this wicked, cruel, seductive army of locusts. And they only obey one master. Their captain is Apollyon, the devil, Lucifer himself. Uh, uh, <laughs> what? 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 So the second coming of Jesus is going to be an apocalypse? Actually, that's fair because that's something that a lot of religions claim in like slightly different ways, right? I should know this because I used to be in a cult. Revelation or whatever. Yeah, the book of Revelation, which is like the, that's like the big, uh, big final fight. So there's lots of stuff where they're like, the world's gonna die and then we all go to heaven, which is fine. But from what I know about like religious texts and a lot of like religious stories, and basically I know nothing, but from what I've gathered is that it's always like, the non-believers fight this horrible war on earth because the devil's you're gonna fight the devil and everyone else just goes up to heaven and is like fine forever also nothing says i'm doing the lord's work like three different fonts in your video also he's coming back because you heard a big boom a big boom a big a boom big boom, boom. <laughs> Sorry everyone, that was me. Sorry guys, every time I sharp myself awake, it's the second coming of our Lord and Savior. Okay, I'll say it. Jesus is acting a little dramatic. Calm down. A giant hole to hell will open, and then a bunch of demonic angels, locusts, and the devil's army are going to rise? That actually sounds like a weird German folk tale that you tell your kids so they go to sleep. Now just remember, children, if you don't go to sleep and listen to your parents, the red-eyed penis monster's going to eat you in your sleep and you'll rot in his stomach forever. Good night! How do you get people to listen to your bullshit? Just threaten them with stories about war. To be honest, I will lie about being a believer just to avoid all that nonsense. I don't want to fight the devil. Okay, I believe. I believe, I believe in it all. Cause I'll be honest, an eternal war with the devil sounds horrible. But so does eternal life in heaven with like all my family. Fuck that. You want me to hang out in heaven forever? I'm sorry, but that sounds terrible. I want an ending. I want it to be lights out. I'm exhausted. Being alive sucks. I want to go to bed. Take the ring out of her nose. No. Take the ring out of her nose.
Whoa! Oh, listen to me! Jewelry and accessories are the work of the devil! Oh my god! I gotta stop wearing belts or I'm going to hell. Like, I'm gonna have to stop wearing earrings and necklaces. Uh-oh, looks like I'm serving demons again. Oh. Damien, more like Slamian, you know what I mean, gang? Isn't it so funny that it's mimed? Like, she's not actually wearing any jewelry. She's just miming everything. As if, like, someone could do such good object work that you would think they're possessed. We all know that theater kids with articulate fingers are from hell. I can't get enough of her whispering a dragon tattoo. What else is there? Dragon like, we can't see any of these things they're taking off, but I love thinking about the fact that underneath that, like, Rise Up t-shirt, there's a humongous dragon tattoo back piece. Either get tattoo removal, or pray your tattoo away. Now, I can laugh at people crying about Jesus all day long, but what I'm obsessed with is Jesus Christ thirst traps. Okay, everybody? Yep. Yeah. I'm all about Jesus being sexy, cause he super was. He was so hot. He was so fucking hot. Are you insane? Original fuckboy, if you ask me. Sneak it out of his mom's house so we can go hang out with criminals and prostitutes. Oh, Jesus, you bad boy. I got a sin you can repent right here. Why don't we pin you up on that cross, you know what I mean? If church was just videos of sexy Jesus, then I would be there every single Sunday. Side note, I'm also obsessed with the fact that, like, Christianity's depiction of Jesus is a guy who would totally love TikTok. Jesus looks like a guy who would go on TikTok so he could document him turning his van into a home. Jesus looks like the kind of guy who would like bring an acoustic guitar to a party. Shoes are actually a prison for your feet. That's why I wear sandals so I can stay grounded. But the real reason I wanted to talk to you guys about these videos is so we could take a look at the alpha male content creators who are obsessed with Jesus. Guys like Bryce Crawford. And Bryce has about 300,000 followers on TikTok. But if you can't get enough of his content on TikTok, you can get more religious content on his Snapchat. Or you can check out his YouTube channel and podcast. Like and subscribe for more white dudes who love Jesus. <laughs> So I'm just sitting here <clears throat> reading Genesis in this little small country-owned Mexican restaurant in Destin, Florida, and the Lord absolutely wrecks me about how much grace is over our lives. Literally everything that we have, the breath in our lungs, the car roof I have over my head, the money I have to be able to eat there, etc., is all grace. And I'm sitting there reading in Genesis, and I'm literally just reading Genesis 3 about the fall. And instead, immediately in their disobedience, instead of God just killing them and wiping them off the face of the planet, being like, I'm not going to create anyone or anything, I'm just going to do my own thing, he says, no, look, death is a reality now, but he gives up grace. And he gives everyone grace. Noah, he gives grace. Abraham, etc. They all have grace. Our lives are full of grace, my friend. The Lord has grace over your life. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God blessed me. God blessed me today. He absolutely wrecked me. Oh, he absolutely blew my back out. God absolutely fucked me today. When I, uh, when I realized that he, uh, he blessed me with the ability to eat tacos. God absolutely wrecked me. <laughs> Fucking on, on God, bro. On God. Jesus is my homie. For real, for real. Jesus is actually legitness. God absolutely wrecked you? How about you just say, I really like the Bible? You don't need to say, God wrecked you. The only person who can say, God absolutely wrecked them is Mary. God absolutely wrecked me by giving a child and then dipping. Yeah, that piece of shit wrecked me when he dropped off the kid and then went out for smokes and never came back. God is the original deadbeat dad. And the Bible actually has a few stories about being a piece of shit dad. And a lot of the Bible stories are about fucking with your kids. You guys remember the story of Isaac and Abraham? Abraham, if you want to prove your devotion to me, then all you'll have to do is kill your son. Don't worry, Abraham. I do it all the time. I killed my kid and they wrote a bunch of books about it. 
Go ahead. Kill him. Kill your son. It's hilarious. Bruh. If you're a piece of shit dad, then you're gonna love the word of God. Maybe that's why all these kids named Bryce are like flocking towards God and Jesus. Ugh, I love God. He reminds me of my own dad. I seek his approval even though I've never met- All right, fellas, we got to pour one out for our boy, Jesus. Fuck boys for Jesus say, Jesus. Of course, it's a guy named Bryce. This is the second coming of Jesus, and his name is Bryce. And he's crying about Jesus because no one actually knows him. You guys don't know Jesus the way Bryce knows Jesus. I'm sorry to break it to you, Bryce but only like a select few people knew Jesus. And uh, they didn't exactly love him. Yeah, when I met Jesus, I knew the vibes were like totally off, bro. Also get over it. That was like a billion years ago. He used to be very athletic, literally like a week ago. Um, and, and I'm very off balance when I walk, so I have to walk very slow, it's sick. Lost my voice, I don't sound the same, and, and I have enough Advil in me to give me energy to walk and, and talk. Most of the day, I lay as, uh, just bedridden. I'm bedridden all day. But I am thankful for my circumstance because I know God has favored me. He wants me to grow closer to Him. And this time, I, I am sick. I can't I can't do things as well as I used to. And I say this to encourage you. Whatever situation and season you are in in your life, be thankful for the circumstance because God has favor in it to help you grow. Set your eyes on him. Wow, Bryce. That's so fucked up. That's so fucked up, man. But you're right. God is testing you, bringing you closer to him by giving you a stuffy nose, a scratchy throat, and making your bones all sleepy. What a test. And that makes me think about my own health. Like my cancer. Uh, I didn't realize that the entire time it was just God bringing me closer to him. He was gonna kill me with cancer just so he could hang out with me. Because God's a loner and a loser. You wanna hang out with me, God? You wanna hang out with me? You have everyone. What are you talking about? You have like, Prince. Go hang out with Prince. You don't need to hang out with me. If you're gonna give me cancer to hang out with me, you're a loser. Sorry, God, I'm not gonna die from cancer just yet. You can't hang out with me. I have a video to make. Also, Bryce, uh, what it really sounds like is you should just go get some Dayquil. Now, I do love the sentiment of this video. I, I love the message that he's trying to put out there. You know, appreciate your circumstances, have empathy for other people and what they're going through um, because it'll give you a good perspective and it'll make you appreciate what you already have. And most of the messages in the Bible are like that. It's usually all about empathy or sympathy and it's good stuff to live by. Now, a uh, key word is most of the messages. Maybe not even most, like some. Some of the messages are really great because there's some messages in the Bible that are really homophobic and promote slavery. But that's the Bible. But I do really love the act out of limping just to get a bit of sympathy on TikTok. Mwah. Now, Bryce is just the tip of the cross. I also found a guy named Trey Valley. Now, Trey doesn't have as big as a following as Bryce does, but wow. He's a content creator who loves God, traditional masculinity, and Andrew Tate, obviously. God heals. When I was young, like five or six years old, I saw my mom healed of cancer completely. They were about to start chemotherapy. The doctors decided to run one more test and the cancer was gone. I've seen people get up out of wheelchairs and start walking and I've seen healing in my own life. So no matter what you say, you can't convince me that God's not good. You can't convince me that he doesn't care or that he's not concerned with us. Yeah, we may suffer, but make no mistake, God still takes care of his kids. Follow for more encouragement like this. <sighs> Well, I don't know if he takes care of all of his kids. It seems like some of his kids get a good hand, and then some of his kids are dealt a hand full of shit. Maybe God shouldn't have had so many kids if he can't take care of them. Bad dad. You know what? 
God also healed my cancer. God created chemotherapy, he created radiation, and he also created brain surgeries. And then I was cured. And by God, I mean the scientists who developed chemotherapy, and my oncologists, and my radiologists, and my nurses. You know, the people who worked extremely hard every day just to make sure that I was an anomaly surviving a disease that destroys people and their families. What a miracle. Sorry, God, if you want to be such a healer, why don't you put on some scrubs and go clean my bedpan? Put on some gloves, grab a mask, and shove a catheter up my penis. Those are the people who healed me. This is also very reminiscent of when I was told that my brain cancer was just a test from God, which if that's the case, God is for sure a piece of shit asshole. What kind of bullshit pop quiz is that? Do you have brain cancer? No. Wrong. What do you mean wrong? Jimmy put no. He didn't get wrong. Jimmy got a different test. How is that fair? It's not fair, Jacob. I'm bored and I'm a sociopath. Also, what about the people who don't survive? What about the people who aren't miraculously healed? What? They don't get to live because they didn't study for the test? Now, don't worry, it gets better. Trey also has really good views on gender. What is happening to men? There's something ominous happening. The male suicide rate is scary. The number of men that are just choosing to be single and live alone for the rest of their lives is scary. The number of men that don't even want to identify as men anymore is scary. And I mean, most men work jobs that they hate in places they don't want to live with people they can't stand. So there's something sinister going on with men. And I'm not completely sure what it is. It's probably a plethora of things, but we're going to have to figure it out because this, this ain't going to work. <laughs> this ain't going to work. This ain't gonna work, brother. We gotta get back to when things are good. We can just grab your dick, rub it, and then <laughs> no one said nothing about it. Now, I don't think I need to decode this one too much. He's just applying, like, real-world issues to specifically men only, just so he can be like, <laughs> men actually have it really hard, too. Not to say that they don't, but... It's just men aren't exactly a marginalized group. Also, yes, suicide is a terrible epidemic and needs to be taken way more seriously. The job market is horrible and work fucking sucks. But what do you mean people don't want to be men? Just because you're born with a penis doesn't mean you're obligated to be a man. I think being a man shouldn't be defined by traditional masculinity. Being more feminine or being more masculine or neither is fine. There isn't one specific definition of what a man is or isn't. And I feel like adding that in just kind of defeats your point. Yes, men struggle with suicide. Men struggle with jobs. Men struggle with a lot of things. But masculinity isn't dying. It's just changing. And that's actually a really good thing. Because I don't know if you've heard, but traditional masculinity ruined a lot of stuff for a lot of people for a really long time. Also, choosing to be single, who cares? Be alone. It's incredible. Yeah, everyone should be codependent. Independence is too hard and scary. And I don't know if all men are choosing to be single. I've met a lot of guys, and a lot of them are very unlikable and undateable. Some guys suck. Be better and get over it. I don't care if you're a man or not. Just don't be a dickhead. Jesus was a man's man. I don't know where this idea came from that Jesus is some feminine pushover. Like, dude, he tore up a synagogue. Huh? Jesus was a man's man? <laughs> Only the real men really understand Jesus. No girls allowed, just me, the guys, and Jesus. We all know the Bible is guy time. That's guy time. You ever just get the boys in the man cave, put on some Joe Rogan, crack a few beers, and just fucking pray? Also, Jesus was a feminine pushover. I've never heard that. I think you made that up. Uh-oh. The feminists are ruining Jesus. Of course a guy on TikTok would get his balls in a twist over a guy who had abs and daddy issues. Like, why do these guys act like Jesus is like Andrew Tate or like Liver King? Jesus was an alpha, dude. He would have been grinding on the cross. He would have been turning water into creatine. And he would be investing in stuff like Halo coin. Like, dude, he tore up a synagogue. He was straight whipping people and flipping tables, man. On top of that, he didn't hesitate to speak the truth regardless of who he was talking to. He wasn't intimidated by anybody. He was saying things that were labeled as blasphemous with his chest, bro. And to top it off, he suffered one of the most painful deaths you can suffer and came back three days later just for the heck of it. Simply put, the dude was the goat.
I can't think of a more manly man that ever lived. So no, Jesus was not feminine. He was not a they them. Jesus was the definition of masculinity. He was everything that masculinity is supposed to look like. Follow for more thoughts like this. He would whip people and flip tables? Sounds like Jesus was a loudmouth jerk. Yeah, get back to when men were men. You know, when we were whipping people, flipping tables, punching babies in the stomach. Hey, maybe we should never do that, ever. <laughs> yeah, men should die more and be resurrected three days later. Dying and staying dead is so beta. This is like a crazy level of ignorance and hate. Can everyone just shut up with jokes about pronouns? Can we just shut up? Can you shut your mouth and just shut up forever? Get over it. Get over it because it doesn't affect you at all. Just call people what they want to be called. It's that simple. Sorry you're so outdated and bored that you have to make everything about you. Everyone who gets so upset about gender politics and pronouns are the most sensitive people on planet Earth. Why did they change their pronouns? The new generation is so sensitive. It's so hard to be a man. Why are you trying to silence me? I have really good opinions. I listen to Jordan Peterson. So I guess what I'm trying to say that we either admit that reciting the word of God on TikTok is the least holy thing you can do, or we could admit that Jesus was this sexist, anti-trans alpha male that for sure would have been a frequent guest on the Joe Rogan experience. Also, just before we end the video, if you are religious and you do believe in Jesus and you do believe in God, I am joking around. You are not wrong in any way and you aren't a bad person. Faith and religion is very important to a lot of people. And again, it's totally fine and respectable as long as you do not use your religion to harm other people. And as long as you don't use it to trend online. Uh-oh, the Bible just went viral again. Alrighty, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sorry if you're upset, but I totally understand why you are. I said a lot of crazy shit. But make sure you like the video and you subscribe to my channel. Because subscribing to my channel is like subscribing to my religious cult. So subscribe to my religious cult for more holy nuggets. Because once you subscribe, you're guaranteed a lifetime of holy nuggets. Holy moly. Also, go check me out on Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. Uh, uh, and you can go check out my podcast, the Mr. Friendship Podcast. I also have another podcast that's completely based around medical health. It's called the All in Our Heads Podcast, and I host it with my good friend, Jake Doolittle. You can go to jacobsharp.com to go check out my merch. I got a lot of cool t-shirts, and I even released a new t-shirt, and all of the proceeds go to support brain cancer and brain cancer research. Now, I gotta get out of here, because I gotta go post some satanic shit on Be Real. <laughs> okay, bye! Can't wait to see the comments section on this one.